In the last video, we looked at addition and subtraction, um, and we looked at different variations of the stack method. We looked at a variation that's more typical, I think, or was for me when I was learning mathematics, where you stack add with the smallest place value and work your way to the largest. We looked at a variation where we added the largest place value first and talked about how that compared. Um, again, adding the largest place value, I think, taps more into your intuition um, because you can estimate where the number is immediately instead of looking at the ones value first and then working your way up to the larger place values. The same for subtraction, talked about borrowing. And then we talked about uh, subtracting the largest place value first and dealing with negative numbers to put your answer back together again. And we also finished with this kind of side note about uh, the idea that any subtraction problem can be written as addition, right? Subtracting a positive is adding a negative, subtracting a negative is adding a positive. Uh, these things uh, going back and forth this is critical. Here we're going to look at my favorite algorithm, the one I use when I'm thinking about numbers. And the goal is, you know, when we're talking about math in the math class, you want to be able to think about the numbers or at least estimate in your head, right? Because you don't want to have to refer to a calculator each time. Imagine if you're in English class and every time a word was spoken, you would have to look it up in a dictionary. Imagine how slow the conversation would be for you. Same thing is true if if I'm in math, if I'm asking you to add or subtract, you can put those two signs together, add or subtract, 304 and 296. Same example in the last video. If you can't think about these numbers and have to look them up on a calculator, um, you can't or you will have a harder time reasoning about the bigger ideas in mathematics. So my the next technique or my favorite is called decomposition, right? And, or you might refer to it as a place value technique, right? And it's really, I don't know if it has an official name, but I'll refer to it in these two ways because we use the place value and we break the numbers up or decompose them to add them and subtract them. So for example, uh, let's go with 304 plus 296. Well, you can go as far as, as you want with this, but you can kind of explode each number into its place value parts or decompose the number into its parts. So 304 is 300 plus 4. So we split it into the hundreds and the ones. There's no tens here, so we don't need to do that. Plus 296, well that's 200 plus 90 plus 6. And now, by doing this in your head even, you can begin to realize, oh, I'm adding 300 and 200, that's 500. I'm adding 4 and 6, that's 10. Right? And I'm adding 90. 500 plus 10 plus 90. That's 600. I would probably do a slight variation. I would do 300 plus 4 plus 200 plus 96 because why? Well, look at these numbers here. 96 and 4 break those up. That's 100 there as well. And 200 and 300, that's 100 as well. So altogether, right? Uh, that's 500, so altogether we have 600, just like we did before. The point is, when I my brain is breaking up numbers. When I'm, when I'm looking at these and thinking about these, I'm looking for tens and hundreds, and I'm breaking the numbers up into their, their place value and decomposing them to solve them. This allows you to think about math as we're talking about it. And the same thing is true for subtraction, right? So subtraction here, 304 minus 296. Well, here, again, I, I think that the place value and decomposition technique works nicely for subtraction, but better for addition. So I would rewrite this as addition. How can I do that? Well, subtracting a positive is the same thing as adding a negative. So 304 plus negative 296. When I think about it this way, it's much easier to work with because now what happens is I have 304 again, so 300 plus 4 plus what? Well, negative 200 plus negative 90 plus negative 6. And here, um, I like the addition because with addition, you can add in any order. So first, let me add 300 and negative 200. Well, what's that? That's really 300 minus 200. That's 100. Plus what? What's 4 minus plus negative 6? Or negative 6 plus 4, or 4 minus 6, that's negative 2. So plus negative 2. 
we think of as in terms of addition, plus negative 90. Here, we have 100 and negative 90 is 100 minus 90, that's 10, plus negative 2. What's 100 plus negative 2? A 10 plus negative 2, that's uh, 10 minus 2, which is 8. So subtraction or adding negatives is difficult, or more difficult, I, I would think, than addition. But you can still use this process of de decomposing the numbers, looking at the place value, to put them back together again. And again, this is just my personal favorite strategy for adding numbers, breaking them into their place value. Just constantly returning the place value is critical. Think about it all the time. Right? When you see 3 or 4, think about the hundreds and the tens and the ones. And for any number, this will help you add them. If you were given much, much larger numbers and you simply you started to add them in your head by looking at the largest place value, you'll always have a sense of where numbers are. In this case, you'll know the, the sum when you add them, the sum, is at least 500. And that knowledge is so critical to talk about mathematics. That number sense will help you greatly. Thanks.